7, 7, ciao studenti and welcome, benvenuti to lesson 17 of this 30 day series for beginner Italian. Today we're looking at one of the most challenging topics for a beginner when you come to learning Italian and that's the definite article, that is how do we say the in Italian. So in English we have one beautiful word, it's easy, it's the. It actually has two pronunciations, we say the or the, but that doesn't matter, but we have one word to perform the job of definite article. Remember when we studied indefinite articles, those were words like un, uno, una, equivalent of the English a, an, like a book, an apple. These ones are the definite articles, these are articles that we use before the word that we're using, that we're talking about, to be specific about the word. And so the difference between a coffee and the coffee is quite clear, right? And that's the word that we're learning today. And in Italian we have seven words, so if you look, look them up or even tried to learn them before, probably you haven't really assimilated them because nobody has taken the time to explain why we have seven. Now, let's make it simple. I'm going to show you a logical reason why we have seven options. Now, be honest, how many articles do you expect to be there in Italian now that you know how the basics of the language work, the foundation? We have two genders, so at least you would expect two articles, right? Well, for masculine, well, for feminine, but hold on. We have singular and plural forms, and while in English the applies to singular and plural, we say the book, the books, doesn't matter. In Italian, now that you know how kind of picky it is about being clear about gender and plural, you expect at least four articles, correct? You expect a masculine singular or an article to introduce masculine and singular words or singular masculine words. You expect an article for plural words that are masculine. Then you expect an article for feminine words that are singular and for feminine words that are plural. So these are the four that you expect. So we're going to start with these ones because it's a matter of just learning what these four words are. Not that complicated. They sound pretty good, you'll see how they flow, and you won't have any problem with these four. So let's start with what I call the standard masculine singular. This means that if you are dealing with a masculine word, never mind what vowel it ends with, it could be libro, it could be cane, it doesn't matter. If you know if that the word is masculine, because you heard that it's masculine, or you looked it up and they tell you that it's masculine, the standard article for masculine words is going to be il, except when it's an exception. So. But let's go with the standard, it's il. So we are going to say il libro, the book. Il filo, the thread. Il bambino, the child. Il caffè, the coffee. Il gelato, the ice cream. Again, just want to point out the difference between un libro and il libro. You know, you could say something, uh, voglio comprare un libro, which means I want to buy a book, because you just want to buy a book, right? But then you would say, voglio comprare il libro che mi hai raccomandato, which would mean I want to buy the book that you recommended. See, we, it's the same as English, I said the book that you recommended, because you recommended it. So that's the idea. What's the plural for those words? If you have a masculine word that is plural, then you're going to use a different article, and the word is i, just the vowel i, i. So we're going to say i libri, the books, i fili, the threads. I bambini, the children, i caffè, the coffees, i gelati, the ice creams. And that's it. So il and i get you sorted with the masculine gender. Now we look at feminine. The standard feminine article for singular is la. La. La ragazza, la ragazza, the girl. La penna, the pen. La spazzola, the brush. La forchetta, the fork. La tazza, the cup. So la is the article for feminine singular. What's the plural? Le. So la becomes le. Also, look at this. The singular, the standard ending for a singular feminine word is a, so we say ragazza, pizza, pasta, a, and the article is la. So la, ragazza, la, pizza is the same vowel almost all the time. The plural of, of feminine words is e, so pizze, ragazze, and the article goes from la to le, so it's kind of consistent, uh, you might use that as a trick to remember that 
you maintain the same vowel most of the time. Le ragazze, the girls. Le penne, the pens. Le spazzole, the brushes. Le forchette, the forks. Le tazze, the cups. And I guess we're done. So we have two articles for masculine, il for singular words and i for plural words. And then we have the feminine, which has la for singular words and le for plural words. So we're done? No, because of course there's more exceptions, but you kind of already know what exceptions to expect. Let's start with words that start with a vowel. Why do I think you know? Because we had the same issue when we learned the indefinite article, and that's why I teach the indefinite article before I teach the definite article, because it helps. So amico, acqua, arte, italiano, università, iglu. These are all words in different genders. Amico is masculine, italiano is masculine, acqua is feminine, università is feminine, arte is feminine, and iglu is masculine. But they, they all end, start with a vowel. Do we do anything with this? Of course we do. We are going to use the consonant L apostrophe. So, for feminine, you know that if the standard is la and we drop the a because the next word starts with a a, we remove the a, we leave an apostrophe. We learned this already. So, L apostrophe makes sense for feminine. Soon it will also make sense for masculine, don't worry. So, l'amico, that's how we say the friend. We're not going to say il amico. Sounds weird. Il amico. L'amico. L'acqua, not la acqua. The double A sounds a bit silly. La acqua, so l'acqua. Arte is l'arte, the art. L'arte, not la arte, l'arte. L'italiano, l'italiano, the Italian, both the language and the person. L'università, the university, l'università. And l'iglu, l'iglu, the igloo. <laughs> It's a strange word, but l'iglu, l'iglu. We know we have more difficult words in Italian, and it's those masculine words that start with those strong sounds. Same as the indefinite article. So a word like straniero, foreigner. A word like gnomo, gnome. Yogurt, psicologo. What happens to them? For the indefinite article, we said that standard is un, which ends with a consonant, which is kind of an, an unusual option, like decision for Italian. But when we need to create a little break because we have too many consonants coming up, we change un to uno, and that's how we get to stuff like uno straniero and not un straniero, because that would be difficult. Same thing. We are going to use the article lo for masculine singular words that start with a strong sound. With time, you'll have an instinct to know which words sound too harsh for the Italian speaker, and you will know to use lo instead of il. When you look at straniero, same idea for un. Il straniero, we would end up with L, S, T, R. Four mm -hmm. consonants before we even say A. Ah. <laughs> so there's way too many consonants. We fix it by adding the O or by replacing Il with Lo. So same with Il yogurt, L, Y, too much for us. Il gnomo, L, Y, too difficult. So we say Lo gnomo. And finally, Il psicologo, too difficult, L, ps, too difficult. So we say Lo psicologo. So you got used to it already with un, uno, and now you're just getting used to it with il becoming lo. So lo straniero, lo spaghetto. That's a, an individual string of spaghetti, lo spaghetto. Why? Because it starts with sp. Sp is one of those strong sounds that once, if you add another consonant before, we, we just cry and we can't pronounce it. Lo yogurt, lo zaino. Remember that z words, in, if they're masculine, they always as strong in that okay, sense, lo zaino, the backpack, lo gnomo, the gnome, lo zenzero, the ginger, lo zenzero, lo psicologo, the psychologist, e lo sciopero, lo sciopero is the strike, lo sciopero dei treni, stra train strike. So now we have, kind of, we're getting there, we're getting there, we have the standard masculine article for, for singular words, il, but we have exceptions. We, we saw that L apostrophe is used when the word is singular, masculine, but it starts with a vowel, we use L apostrophe. And then we saw that the word is masculine and it's singular, but it starts with a strong sound, we use lo. So now we've covered the masculine singular. For feminine, we learned that la is the standard singular, unless the word starts with a vowel, in which case we use L apostrophe, that makes sense. Now, looking at the plurals, we said that 
il, when you use il, the plural version of il is i. So we went from il libro to i libri. So the standard masculine article for plural is i. The standard feminine for both la and el apostrophe is le. So it doesn't matter what the word starts with. If it's a feminine word and it's in the plural, we're going to say le. So I'll give you an example. We said la ragazza, but then we say l'amica, because amica, friend, starts with a, a vowel. But what if it, it was plural? So we say le ragazze, because la, the plural of la is le. But then we also say le amiche, le amiche. We're not going to say l'amiche. The plural of amica is amica. See, amica, amiche with e. But the article is still le for all feminine words that are plural. That's really handy because the masculine doesn't do that. What's the plural for the words that use lo and el apostrophe? So we have words like amico, masculine, singular. Aereo, airplane, masculine, singular. They, they would use el apostrophe because they start with a vowel, they're special. But then we have words like straniero, studente, zaino, and zoccolo, which is a type of shoe. So they use law because of the same reason that we, you know, we explained. Well, there is another plural article, which, is, which takes us to seven, basically. And that is for plural masculine words that start with a vowel or with a strong sound. And that's ye. It looks funny. It's pronounced G-L-I, but that G-L-I is a sound that comes from the throat. It's ye, 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 ye. I hate this sound. I can't pronounce it too well. And this one is the plural article for those words. So we will say gli amici, not i amici, but gli amici. We say gli iglu, gli iglu. I find it difficult. Maybe you find it too, but that's the one that we should be using. Gli iglu. And then we have gli italiani, gli italiani. Now, of course, when I speak, you notice that I said ye, I kind of blended the E of ye and the E of italiani, because that's what we do. So I didn't say ye italiani, I could say ye italiani, a little bit of a blend there. But then I say ye stranieri, the foreigners, ye stranieri, ye yogurt, ye yogurt, ye gnocchi, ye gnocchi. So now we've covered all of them. Once again, let's look at all the articles that you need to deal with, depending on the word that you are saying the for, basically. If it's a singular feminine word, you're going to say la. Unless it starts with a vowel, in which case you're going to say el apostrophe. No matter what they start with, when they're plural, feminine words use le as the article that introduces them. Good. And for masculine, we have the standard masculine article for singular words is il. Unless the word starts with a vowel, in which case we use el apostrophe, or if it starts with a strong sound, we use lo. So we have three singular article articles for the masculine world, but look at it. Here's the final gem. You could even be brave and say, oh, we actually have seven, we have four. Because what happens when you look at lo and el apostrophe, do you see that they are the same article? As you know, when you see an apostrophe, it means that a vowel was lost. So when you use el apostrophe for the masculine, what vowel do we lose? Well, it's the o of lo. And so, Basically, we could say that the masculine world in the singular has il and lo, and then lo kind of changes to el apostrophe to flow a little bit better, just like the feminine changes from la to el apostrophe. So el apostrophe is not really the issue, right? Now for plurals, the standard is i, and then if we are dealing with an exception word, meaning it starts with a vowel or with a strong sound, then the article is yi, which it's pretty difficult to pronounce, if you ask me. The purpose of this madness of all these articles, as you know, is to help us, Italians and you, <laughs> learner, to pronounce words a little with, with more ease and just flow over them without stumbling upon big blocks of consonants. So we should be thankful that we have seven articles. Now, as you're learning words, that's, that's my traditional tip, learn the word with the article. So you never have to guess is zaino a special word? No, because you will learn lo zaino and you will know already that lo zaino just tells you that, oh, it's one of those exceptions. So do that and then trust your gut feeling. You'll be surprised at how often your instinct will be right. And then you will question it, you will change it, and then you'll be wrong. So go with your instinct. It's my experience. Usually you're more right than wrong. Uh, over time, it'll come to you. You're just getting started. It's kind of a complex topic and 
the more immersion you do, so that means the more Italian you hear by doing your immersion, the more Italian you read, if you are into reading, the more it will come to you and you will kind of know how it's done. And it's no biggie if you get the wrong article. Actually, there's a whole section of Italians who don't use gli because they don't like the sound of it. And so instead of saying gli stadi, they, you might hear i stadi. So it's grammatically incorrect. If you can be accurate, then do it. But again, it's not a big deal if you kind of mess up an article. The only problem with getting the article wrong is that you also get the gender of the word wrong. And so let's say la porta, that's the door. But il porto is the port, the harbor. But we didn't just get the wrong article. We also changed the word from porta to porto. And I don't think you're going to do that most of the time. So you will be totally fine. Complimenti e congratulazioni. You've learned the Italian articles and now you can go out and make much more complex sentences. Ciao e a domani per la prossima lezione.